Hi hey everyone, in this video we are going to talk about AWS Direct Connect. Now before we talk about uh, the actual solution, we're not going to spend a ton of time going through the, the technicalities of it and how you do it and all that kind of stuff. I just want to give you guys a general idea of what this is. But understanding what it is, if you don't understand why you need it, then understanding what it is is pointless. So let's imagine here that we have three clustered EC2 instances and let's say that they are all web servers. Okay, And here we out here in the world we have the internet, so we'll say INET. And the internet is coming in and accessing our, our cluster of web servers on 443. They're accessing our WordPress website or whatever it is. Now, our web server has some dependencies on S3. No big deal because our S3 is, is part of our AWS infrastructure, and so we don't really need to do anything crazy there. The problem that we have, though, is these web servers, these WordPress servers, maybe they're, you know, obviously people are leaving comments. It's a blog, so people are commenting, people are reading. They require some back-end database resources. and Or maybe it's a storefront, right? Maybe these maybe uh, folks are coming to, to buy our product, and we need to be able to store all of their customer information, credit card numbers, things like that. Now, while AWS provides us database resources to be able to do that, we don't keep them in AWS. We keep them in our on-prem data center. And there's a number of different reasons why we might do that. We could have, uh, you know, we could have finance that that has, you know, some direct. Uh, need for those database servers to be on-prem. We could have some compliance requirements that, that require those database resources to be on-prem. We could have some DevOps uh, folks that require the, the development resources to be on-prem. We could also have various different campus uh, users that are using, we're just going to say app X, but it could be app one, two, three, application four, five, six, whatever, that have a dependency on these shared database servers. And so we have a couple of options in, in reality. We could replicate these databases into our on-prem. We could we could replicate these on-prem databases to our cloud deployment. Um, but there's a challenge because you know we have these database records and tables, and we have to get these databases across the wire to a database server that would be in our EC2 instance or RDS data, you know database or something like that. Um, and that could pose a challenge, right? Because would that link be encrypted and things like that? This is kind of what Direct Connect aims to solve for us. So it allows us to essentially connect. Um, to a to a direct endpoint. So you can see here the AWS direct endpoint. What this allows us to do is essentially connect our either our customer network or a partner network. It's it's really either one. This doesn't necessarily have to be here, but we essentially connect our on-prem network or our customer network to an AWS direct connect location. And what that allows us then to do is create virtual interfaces. So we're just going to say vint for virtual interfaces to the various different resources that we might need there or want to connect to. So in this case, we essentially are bypassing that internet. So, so if we were going to replicate this without Direct Connect, you know, we'd have to do something like this. Pardon my dotted line spacing, but we'd have to do something like this, where we come into the internet and then we come back into AWS. But we don't need to do that with Direct Connect. With Direct Connect, again, we can essentially connect to that AWS Direct Endpoint and then create these virtual interfaces here to connect to anything that we want. So we can directly connect to our S3 storage. We can directly connect to our EC2 instances, and this is basically uh, like an extension of a data center. So, you know, there are some configurations that have to happen here. You do essentially download like a virtual config to put on a router. You do need, uh, again, to create some virtual interfaces and things like that. Um, but it, it allows you to essentially have, uh, for lack of a better term, that VPN, that virtual private network, that virtual private connection between your AWS VPC and your on-prem data center.